Greetings, greetings, and welcome all to another segment of Miss Rushumba. Let's talk and grow with Miss Rushumba. Kind of had a little backwards. Uh, first, I give honor to our Creator, for which all things are and forever will be in this vast universe. And also we depend on the Creator to guide us each and every day that we're given. Asheo. Secondly, my inspiration for this show was due in part to my dearly transcended friend, Mr. Early Laverne. Mr. Early Laverne and I met in 2011. He being a poet and I being a poet, we were able to have a two-year special friendship until his passing at 2013. My spirit feels like it's important to honor him for the things that he did and could not do for his 62 years, I guess, at that time. Today, as I always do, I start off with one of his poems and I end with one of mine. And I also want to let you know I have a wonderful guest that will be joining me in that hot seat right there. <laughs> and um, I look forward to sharing her story with you because we are the star of our story and we must make room for us to be able to tell it. So today's poem is kind of along the line of this woman I'm about to speak about today and have us my guest. I'm keeping it a secret. <laughs> I won't say her name yet. Um, but I will start with the poem. Uh, Black Woman Rightfully Take Your Place by Mr. Early Laverne. That's the title. Black woman, you have been spiritually formed. Reality assert that you are the light of dawn. Your life is to make clear the true way. You're the essence of a sun shiny day. Your eternal duties are to produce and share. Your world, man and children are in your care. Empower them with all of your might for the rising dawn is such a powerful light. Your divine creator has granted you everlasting strength. Develop these abilities at great length. Display always ultimate reality. Grant to all that's yours their true identities. Your eternal fires dwell within. You possess the powers that far exceed sin. All which are yours you must always defend your world foundation of being a true friend. You black mothers are fertile seed. Your universal duties are forever in need. Your eternal obligations are to save the race. Black woman, take your rightful place. Yes, setting the scene for the queen today who's gonna join me in this conversation. My guest today is of a star status to those that know her in the educational system. She's well known to the faculty in the Elk Grove School District as well as the school boards in Sacramento. She has the most recognizable face in the business and is known for getting answers that benefits both the children and the staff alike. She's very loved and revered by all those that she has self selflessly served. I can go on and on about Mrs. Joyce Brown. Please join me, Mrs. Joyce Brown. Please join me today. Thank you, thank you for having me. Here she is. You get to see that special face that I've told you this queen and what she's done. So that poem is dedicated to you, Mrs. Oh, Joyce you. Brown. I love it. I love yes. that poem. Beautiful you speak bread. so much about who you are. 
It speaks so much about who you are. So we're going to get to know her because, you know, oftentimes a lady like this is found on the job doing the work. So we won't see her out there hanging out. We won't see her at no festival. She's always doing the work for the future, the youth. So let's get to know her. She really could be put in a position to just sit and talk. So I'm going to get right to it. <laughs> well, welcome again. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. So as we speak loudly for our camera to hear you, um, who is Mrs. Brown? Hmm. So many things. I'm a Christian as one. Yes. I love the Lord. He's Christian. She loves the Lord. Yes. And I'm always talking, you know, I'm glad you said that, to speak up so that everyone can hear me. I'm always saying that to my officers in BSU. Stand up, speak up so that they can hear what That's you're right. saying. And here I am talking low, <laughs> sexy, so that you can hear me. But you're right, yeah. and I need to speak up so that you can hear me. Mm -hmm. But one thing that I, about Miss Brown, I love the Lord, and I love the children of, Lag of Laguna High School, yes. and all over. I do so much with... Um, education yes. anywhere I go when I talk to kids I I talk to them about themselves right away how are you doing yes what are you doing in school right are you in BSU what are the things you like to do yes. let them talk and be able to share with you yes. because we look at kids and there they are talk to them they have so much to give you and so much that we can learn from so that's that's, that's who she me. is you see how she goes right to talking about <laughs> who she cares about and who yeah. she is there for but when I say, who is Mrs. Brown? I want to know a queen, a daughter, somebody's daughter, because her mother is still alive. Right, who I take care of, 94 years old. Her mother is 94 years old. She has um, a disease of dementia, but we go over that. And we, she cares for her mother. Yes. So she's, a, and she's married. Yes, so I have a husband. She has a husband. Willis Brown. Willis Brown. and. How many children do you have, Mrs. Brown? I have four children. I have three boys and one girl. Three boys and one girl. And I, I just want to let you know, she's the only girl, too. Oh, yes. How many brothers do you have? Two. Two brothers, and she's the only girl. Twins. They're twins. All right. So mm -hmm. as we could see, you know, um, her journey already is kind of being clear. She cares for her elder mother, yes. 94, and that's no easy feat. Right. And she's married, and she's a mother, and she has children and grandchildren. Yes. And then she's here giving up her time to the educational system with a large amount of children that know her. Not just the ones that are here as she goes through the school years, but the years past. So before, Mrs. Brown, what did you do for a living before you started doing what you do now? Were you always a teacher? I always worked in the school system. Okay. And that's in San Diego as well as in Sacramento. Okay. And started at Elk Grove High School when I came here. Okay, so you always worked amongst the youth in Brilliant. the school system. Yes. I've always was attracted to that. Yes. I remember when I was in San Diego, um, that was the elementary school I was working in, and I could tell that this young young kid, I think he was in kindergarten first grade, mm -hmm. I could tell that there was a problem with him and the parent. Okay. And I invited them to stay with me in my home. Wow. And I was living in an apartment then because I could see that they were homeless. I could tell okay. they were homeless. And I kept them with me for about a year. And she got a job at McDonald's. She was able to save and get a car. Wow. And then she was able to move out on her own. I, that was years, years ago. So that set the pace sure to did. define your journey. Yes. And here you are, years later, still you open your heart and helping the children, the future. And I would imagine the world is a better place because of what you've done and continue to do over those years. Uh, for example, you have been volunteering here at Elk Grove School District right. as a BSU what advisor advisor for mm -hmm. how many years now? Oh, over fifteen years. Over fifteen years. Mm -hmm. And um, how many of those children that you've helped over the years that have come back to say because they've known you, their lives have taken on much more powerful. Yes, things. there has to, those leaders. They come back as leaders in their jobs, in their lives. It's just outstanding to see them come back. Wow. That's the pay. Yes. That's the pay that you can get to watch these kids come back and want to help. Yes. 
I have some that's right now that want to help and do help. Wow. I have I have parents who are parents here at Laguna Creek. Yes. And they were also my students at Sac High mm -hmm. and was in BSU. And their kids have now graduated and they have another set of kids that are here. It's just outstanding mm. to watch the population grow like mm. that in BSU. And you've had you have had a hand in it. Oh my goodness. It feels so good to be able to see them grow as wow. beautiful stars. And that's where they are. Wow. Male and female. Male and female. You see? So when we think that we cannot affect change in this world, these are the ways. We are doing it, and she right. has done it. And long after she leaves this area, this community, this world, she will be remembered. And that's how we keep people alive. That's right. Because we remember what they did in those moments when we needed it most. And we never have to complain about, I'm not getting paid. Right. There's ways that you do get paid. I have great health. Yes. The age that I am, I have great health. Did you hear what she just said? She has been doing this 15, 15 year work or more. or more. I was kind of thinking, you, you know, it was 17 when we had a conversation it was. It's before. More, yeah. So it's, it's actually more, if you way, know. Way more. But um, without pay. Yes. Is what I'm getting yes, at. Without she, pay. She, without pay. Her pay, she says, is the blessing she gets when she sees the fruits of her labor grow. And when you wake up every morning in your right mind and you can do the things that you want to do with these kids, that's the blessing. That's the blessing. And you see the change. You can tell what's yes. going on. Wow. And you're helping teachers as well as the students. You know? <laughs> and we know our school system has not always been favorable to us of African descent. Right. Right. We know the journey of integration back in the early 60s and the fight in the 50s for uh, equal education. So when we see Mrs. Brown uh, coming here into the school system, put, putting her arms around those children that have issues, not just issues in school, but issues coming out of their home. You could, you know, you could be uh, considered a celebrity <laughs> because you see, you're not dealing with things that are comfortable mm. and okay. Because when the children come to you, there's always some kind of stress or distress going on. Right. Either coming out of the classroom feeling a way or, you know, coming from home feeling a way. And oftentimes young people, they don't, understand, they don't believe that adults could help them. Right. They think we're foreign to them. Right. <laughs> they right. think we didn't know that we were once young too. <laughs> right. So for them to open up to Mrs. Brown mm -hmm. says that there's been a trust that you've allowed them to be able to come to you in that way, Mrs. Brown. How did you do that? How did you get them to trust you like that? Is it because, like you said many years ago, when you took in that young mother and her young child, you think that opened the key to your life, just being that person that everyone just automatically go to? You know, I think that when you just love, when you love, that opens up a lot. That says a lot when you say you love, and I do under all conditions what those kids have. Yes. They come in with baggage, I have baggage. Yes. You know, they listen to me. Yes. So I'm able to talk to them, hear what they have to say, and then we come to a conclusion of what we can help them with. Yes. That's what we're trying to yes. do. Let's see how we can help this problem. Yes. And we do it together. Ah. Uh, you see, she answered that key word, love. You know, and we think of some of the people that are educators and, you know, this, these are the times that they're going to have to show up with love mm -hmm, because mm -hmm, we're mm -hmm. in an environment right now still, you know, after the COVID, which it hasn't gone, it's just metamorphosized in different ways. But, you know, that and where it's kind of have us now having to clearly look at who we are and who we want to be and who we want to be, especially to the children, the future. And so, you know, being there to help each other, what, what you just said made me have to refer to my little symbol oh, right yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. You see, beautiful. beautiful. We must help each other right. up. That's right. So the fact that she spent many years uh, in the field of working with the future, I always say the future because young people one day will be the ones running things. 
and they're going to remember who was there for them, who influenced them in a positive way, yeah. and those that didn't do it in a negative way. Right. So for her to not get, get paid, but do her part, again, I honor you with so much respect. Mm. Because uh, people are getting up every day, shuffling through, trying to find their way to work for that dollar. But you're working for your blessing, and look at you right. glowing. Clarity of mind, health and strength, strong enough to not just help yourself, but your 94-year-old mother, right. your husband, right. your family in general. Because, you know, when you're the queen and you understand, everyone is coming to you. Oh, yeah. And then the numerous children that come to this BSU office. So, um, again, I, I, I want to honor you. What are the challenges that exist? Mm -hmm. that cause you to get up and come into the school each day on the behalf of the students. You know, over the 15, 17 years, things have changed. Yes. What are some of the things that you say, you know what, I, I feel like staying in bed, but things are changing and I still <laughs> got to come in. And, you know, what are some of those things that are pushing you to come in? What are, because the children are changing in right. how they see themselves, the world. What are some of the, uh, the challenges that keeps you coming? You know, life itself is a challenge. Yes. And so you have to know what your purpose is. And my purpose is to do what I'm doing. If it wasn't, I wouldn't be able to do this. So we already know the challenge. Right. I know my purpose. I have to get up and help that student because that student needs me. That's correct. And there has been time when I say, well, I'll lay here just a little longer. I usually am up between five and six. Okay. So I lay here just a little longer. Well, at seven o'clock, someone's calling. Ms. Brown, did you know I need this? Let me get right on up. So you already prepare for that. Let's get up like we always get up because we know the challenges for today and be prepared. I like to read something with, with, with God in mind before I get out of the bed because I have to bring him with me. That's correct. And that is my strength. So once I have that and clarity of my mind, I move right on. Wow. We already know what's going on in the school system. A lot of times you have varieties and different nationalities. Yes. We don't know every nationality and what everyone's doing. That's we correct. don't know it. That's correct. So we need to be able to get to know each other. That's how you find out, That's by correct. talking to the kids. You get to know each other. Now, I have the time to be able to do that. Maybe a teacher might not be able to get to everybody to know them. Yes. I have that time, because when they have that problem, they come to me. They come to you. So I get that knowledge, I'm gonna use it, tell that teacher, help that teacher, be there for your kids. I have to be there. Because they're gonna have a problem, or even if they have success, Miss Brown, guess what? What? Yes. And I'm happy to yes. hear that. We talk about it. So we know that there's challenges every day, like you said. So let's alleviate that and make it a prosperous day. How can I make this as a blessing? Mm. The principal here, Mr. Uh, Benson, says, uh, says it's so good. How can I make this a yes? And that's, I like that. I wanted to take that from him. How can, when a person comes to you with something, how can I make it a yes? Wow. And I like that. I, I, I love that. Yeah. I do love that. And you know, when the Creator starts to bless you, everything becomes a yes. Yes. So when we are blessed, we must also find that opportunity to make it a yes for That's those right. that we're here to serve. That's right. I, I get that. it. Yeah, let's I love yes. it. And you know, when we think about BSU, uh, we think of Black Student Union. Right. But you know, I've come and helped Mrs. Brown over the years. Yes, more than and more. It's not just black students that that's come. Right. That's right. I just wanted to let people know that all students come. That's right. They find a refuge around Mrs. Brown and her energy and her love that she has for all children. That's right. You know, um, I'm going to zero in a little bit to the parents. The parents of these children must be in awe with what you've done in supporting their children over the years. They've helped. The parents have helped. Yes. I can call parents. I have a list yes. where I call the parents. Parents do not answer the phone anymore. I don't know why you guys don't, but no one answers the phone. So I have to learn how to text at the age that I am. Yes. I text every parent and I get a response where they want to help. Even the ones from the past, they're always coming back to help. And they help the new ones because they tell them what we've done together. Not what I've done, what we've done together because they work with me. Yes. And that's a blessing. Yes. These parents have... We need to help parents. The young parents don't know. Yes. We have to help them. Yeah. 
and let them know you don't let your child go when they get in high school. They need you more than ever now because they're going through college and work. They got to have that sense of knowledge of where they're going and what they're doing. Exactly. A lot of the kids don't know consequences. Right. That's why they do a lot of things because there's not a thought pattern of what would happen if I do that? Right. Our parents taught us that. Yes. They taught us and they said, man, I'm going right upside that head. They say that, yes. that's a consequence. That's a consequence. I don't want to be embarrassed and get slapped upside by head, so I'm not going to do that. Right. I don't want to go to jail and things will happen. The kids don't hear that anymore. They have to hear the consequences of what will happen. Mm -hmm. Some of the consequences in school are not as strong as it should be. Right. Start taking things away that they really want and enjoy, you'll see a difference. We have to do things that help our students. All right because they're out there by themselves. They didn't get all that that we got. Right. Let's give it to them. That's and that's why I'm gonna to try to do that before I close my eyes. That's wonderful. Parents, if you're listening, she said some real solid uh, knowledge right there she shared. The children need to not just be passed on to high school and said, okay, you're big now, go. Yeah. And, uh, right. and being able to make sure they have consequences that you know that they know that it's there whether you give it to them or not society will yes going to give it to them going to give it to them that's why our kids are being killed you see them being killed a consequence just the easy thing when a person is stopped by the police we don't tell our kids don't start moving around and grabbing things because they don't know what you're doing right and they can use that as an excuse right. keep your hands where they can visually see you don't say things smart and make someone angry -er with you right. to want to hurt you. Right. When you have your hand in the lion's mouth, you ease it out. You ease it out. You don't yank it out. That's correct. They used to teach us all those uh, verses and, and parables That's they right. told us. That's right. And we listen to that. Yeah. But we don't tell our kids anything anymore. We have to share that with them. Yeah. And they love it. They want to hear it. Yeah. Now, um, a lot of these children come from homes that are basically single parents. Yeah. And you know, the effects of it is sometimes what we see when these children come. So what are some of the things would you say to the parents and the single mom or even the single fathers that are caring for these children as they change from you know, a young individual to an adolescent and, and start being more you know, out into the world and mm -hmm. showing their, their faces? What would you say to the parents that they should try to do more to their children because you get to see the child that is sad, that yeah. the child that is hopeless, the child, you know, they may show you even more their vulnerability than they even show their parents that is, you know, trying to make a dollar, trying to make a living and have more other siblings to deal with. What would you say to them, Mrs. Brown? I was once a single parent. Okay. So it, was, it wasn't that easy, but you make it easy if you do the right thing. You follow the rule of a parent. Once you become a parent, you're not that little kid anymore. Yes. You are that parent. You are in charge. Stay in charge. Yes. When I told my kids what to do, I meant that, and they had to do it. There were consequences if they didn't. But I also showed them and taught them in the right way. I did what I was supposed to do. Showed the example. We are not perfect. Yes. So whatever our sin is that we do, don't let your child see your sin. Don't act like it is such a great thing that you can do because you're an adult. They learn everything from you. So when they come to school and they're cursing, we know we got that from home. We know what that's just not, they didn't read that in the book, they got that from home. When we see them rolling their eyes and they're so disrespectful, we know they got that from home. So what we wanna do is show them the right way. Years ago, if you remember, to keep us safe from harm out there, they taught us to say yes ma'am or yes sir to any and everybody. Right. They taught us to love and show respect to any and everybody. If there was a problem, we brought that problem home to that adult mm -hmm. for them to take care of it. We didn't take care of adult problems. We stayed out of adult things. And that's what, that kept us safe. That's correct. And that's, that's correct. what our kids need to learn as a single parent you work with that child and teach that child. Get up in the morning. Don't lay in bed until 12 o'clock. Half the day is gone. That's correct. My grandmother used to say the early bird catches the worm. That's correct. You want a job, you don't get up at 12 and come there halfway dressed. 
You dress successfully. You dress the way you want to look on your job. You smell good. Hygiene is very important. We don't teach our kids that anymore, but we have to get back to it. And I know you parents will. I know you will. I know if you, if someone tells you this is what's lacking at school, you're going to say, oh, let me get on that. Because maybe you didn't. When you were going to school, maybe there were showers and the kids were being clean. They're not showers anymore. So you need to know that. They need to know to be clean and, and put clean clothes on, deodorant, do everything that they can do to, you, you decide the smell that you want. If you don't clean yourself, then your body decides the smell. If you decide the smell you want, you'll put the things on on a clean body and you'll project that. And you won't wear pajamas to school. school. Amen. Amen. Just roll out of bed and just go to school. Somebody's not watching. Well, there's a time and a place for every day. Yes. And we have to learn that. Yes. Even the, the little short shorts that they wear, it's a time and place for that. Exactly. And you'll attract what you wear. Wow. Parents, <laughs> you see, see the value of Mrs. Brown. And the interesting thing is, Mrs. Brown is retiring for the second time. Right. This is right. her last month here in the Laguna School District, in the Elk Grove School that she's been at for a long time. Right. And um, there's already a sadness. I, I talked to one person this, this morning while waiting for her to come that says, as she talks about it, she got teary-eyed yeah. because she doesn't know who's going to be able to right. fill the shoe of you, Mrs. Brown. Right. Um, and it's true. Yeah. It's rarity. It's rarity to have people that show up with their hearts. Right. But we believe in God, and just as God created a space for you, yeah. that God will make sure someone comes behind you and continue what you started. Right. It will not end when you're gone. They now will know how to do it. Right, right. So um, I, I could keep going on, but I know she has to yeah. go to work, and you know, <laughs> and I don't. I, I think she said some things that I, I think we will forever know, and. And, and your family, I'm sure, are very proud of you. Mm -hmm. They're proud of you because they kept saying, Mom, why don't you just stay home? And you said, no, I got right. to go. They, they want me. Right. They That's want right. me to be there. They need to see me. They need to see some consistency. Right. So um, so you're saying goodbye after all these years. How does that feel to you? Tom? Mm. Tell me what that feels like to you. I'm so sad. I'm happy that I'll be with my son because he wants to help. And I, I do need the help. You hear what she just said? She, you know, I, I could see she needed help all along, but you know what? Somehow God saw her through, but she's finally saying, you know, I need a little help now. And so to those that are listening, to those that you know have been uh, benefit from Mrs. Brown, remember it's important to give a giver. Givers don't know how to say "give to me." Mm. They never do. I'm one of those. <laughs> <laughs> so please just remember that we won't ask a giver if they want it. We'll make sure we find a way to give them. Yeah, I worry, I, I know my fear she will be in good hand because Miss Keyshawn will be taking over. Yes. And she definitely will be. That was your partner in the Always, yes. she's like a daughter. Yes. She's like a daughter, yes. so um, I'm really gonna miss her. She, yes. boy, but she's gonna be able to bring it on through, but I need for parents to really step up and help her. She needs gonna, she's gonna need help. Yes. And so um, I'm sitting up here getting yes. teary yeah. going, but it's, you, it is, it's a good thing to leave, but I don't want to leave my family here at BSU. These kids have been everything to me. They have really been a great asset. They keep me young. They help me with all the things that go on in this classroom, all the computer things, because I didn't know if a computer was on or off. They help me with that. The iPhone I have, they do everything with it. They help me with everything, and they make sure I know how to do it. They are magnificent. But I, I know that um, 
with you, Roshamba, I know you've been here with me. You've done wonderful things with these kids, showing them the library, the live library that you have with all the- the mobile museum. Oh my goodness. <laughs> they love the mobile museum. Yes. And with all the education that you have behind that and all the history that you know, that's what they need. They need people like you to come out and really just talk to them, help them, and you share with them so much. So I, I feel good about what I'm leaving behind because I have strong people that's my church. Um, uh, SSCC is yes. another place that I know my kids can go. Yes. They, and they have opened the door for so many things. It's just, I have been blessed. Yes. With God has surrounded me with people. All my, I could just keep naming so many people. Daryl Roberts, just so many, you know, wow. they're people who have reached out and they come back up. And I knew them when they were very young. Yes. These people who are out there, my pastor, oh goodness. Yes. It's just on and on. Yeah. I'm not kidding. The mayor, the mayor right now, Bell Grove, she helps in so many ways. Wow. It's just reaching out to tell you the names of people who have touched my heart and helped my kids is just amazing. But I need for all of us to get together. Don't let BSU Laguna Creek go. Come over. Come over and just at lunchtime, they need people to just stand around. You know, you um, advocates that yes. are out there, we do so many things. Yes. Stop in your schools at lunchtime. Just stand around so that they can see a presence of adults watching the kids, talking with the kids, yes. seeing what they, we, we always send out things. I get a lot of things on my um, computer that people are saying, inviting students to come here or there. Mm. When parents see that, they see it, but they don't know you. Right. But if you come to the school and have a relationship with yes. the kids, yes. they'll say, I remember that person That's correct. and I wanna go. Yes. So don't just keep sending out those little things and say, oh no, they don't wanna get involved. They don't know you. Come to the school and talk and just talk to the kids. Right. Once you talk to them and standing around, they'll remember you. Give them a flyer. They'll take that home. Yes. They'll be there. Yes. Because more than likely, they're your neighbor's children. Yes. They're your children's children. They're the community's children. So you will see them. I, I, I can't begin to tell you that as I move through, through my daily life at a grocery store, different places, how I would see a face. And, mm -hmm. I, and it's like, I remember you because I, I briefly worked at Monterey Trail a few years back and it's like they're now 30, 31 and they mm -hmm. remember me and I remember them. And I always remember what you say, if you always do good things for them, they will always remember they will. who you are. I, I did have one student at Monterey Trail that I was teaching, you know, more history, you know, I am about history. Yeah. And she said to me, you know, I didn't understand what you said then but I know what you mean now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they right. never forget what you tell them. That's right. It's sometimes you're too early. You tell them then and it's later on it sinks in. That's right. Because, you know, we have to remember we were once young too. That's right. That's My right. mom always said, you know, I wasn't, I didn't born big. <laughs> I had to evolve to be where I am That's now. That's right. That's right. So I, I honor you. I respect you for the time, the energy, your heart, your ability to be here, not just coming here, but going on trips with them, seeing them do graduation, seeing them do performances, yes. seeing them different times, yes. days, games. This yes. lady here. Yes. So we, we honor pictures. you. You know, um, also if people could donate pictures, like we have pictures around on the walls and things. This room should be filled with all yes. kind of pictures of people that they could relate to right now. That's doing things that's right, right now. That's right. Right now. That's right. Get our pictures out there and say what we've done. Yes. Just see them yes. up just talking and seeing that. And so I invite the, the, the guests that are watching, the people that live in the Sacramento Elk Grove area yes. uh, of, of California, to you know if you if you have things that you want to share of course get permission from the school and the bsu and that she will be kishan thornton she will, tortona uh, tortona tortona sorry her last name is tortona mm -hmm. um and and bring it and share it because the children belong to all of us right because if we're not doing good things for them we'll meet them down on the alleyway in that's a different right. way that's right that's right it takes a village. It takes a village. It takes a village. 
So um, I'm not going to go much longer because sometimes my audience says it, it does take a while. And as we can see, we're at the school. And so, um, yeah, I, I want to just kind of close out now with one of my poems, okay? Thank you again for coming. I have a card for you. This oh, is going to be yours you. for me. Thank you. And this was my birthday card that I shared with the homeless folks. So I'm going to share that with okay. you. <laughs> and I'm going to read the last poem. Oh, many rivers I have crossed. Many rivers I have crossed. Many mountains I have climbed. Many moons I have seen to arrive at this place. Many faces I have seen. Many conversations in between have guided me to this newfound destiny. Now, what am I to tell this child that looks up at me with bold, beautiful eyes? <coughs> How shall I tell this little one that it be the mystery given unto man that will lead us by the hand to this futuristic place way beyond? It's in the choices presented to us daily that we must use to make sense of the chaos that's been fed to the weak and weary. There's one thing I believe to be true. Long before there was me and even you, existed is our creator, a gentle power, the essence of the me and you. So fret not my human family, Let's allow the sacred spirit to guide we through the many rivers, over the highest of mountains, through the fullest of mountains, a fullest of moons, to the bright <clears throat> to brighten the darkest of nights. Excuse me. Yes, my brothers and sisters, victory will be sweet when the sun arises to greet we, and our oneness is all that our soul can see. When everywhere we look, Pain and shame is no more, replaced with joy and love, the true essence of we. Go now, enjoy your birthright. Destiny awaits thee. Feels good. <laughs> I think it was only coming for me to share that as Mrs. Brown departs from her mission of caring for the future. Um, at, at El Grove um, Laguna Creek School. Um, again, I thank you for being a part of this show. Mm -hmm. And for those that are watching and if watching for the first time, please subscribe, thumbs up, and share with a friend because we are the ones we've been waiting for. And we can do whatever it is that we're inspired to do as long as we believe <clears throat> in the Almighty Mm -hmm. and each other. So Tushunda was one of Early's uh, way of saying we struggle together. It's a Swahili word. So mm -hmm. Tushunda, I share with you this video. Miss Brown, thank you again for thank joining you. me on Let's Talk and Grow with Miss Rashumba. Thank you for having me. Yes. Bless. <laughs>